following announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. You know, doing this whole NWO thing. Oh, shoot. Damn it. Oh, sorry. Didn't know I was on there. I get carried away sometimes. Sorry about that. Uh, this is week 49. Uh, always wanted to do that. Always <laughs> Week 49 of the Monday Night Wars coming to you from the WCW side, September the 23rd, 1996. This is the 54th Nitro, the 49th week they've gone at it head-to-head. -head. Nitro beats Raw for the 13th week in a row. The score was 3.4 for this Nitro to 2.0, even though they had advertised on the other side of WWF that Razor and Diesel were going to show up. So through 49 weeks, Nitro has 30 wins. 17 losses and two draws. This is Nitro with a 3.4 rating from Birmingham, Alabama at the Benjamin Jefferson Civic Center, September the 23rd, 1996. And it's not brought to you by the New World Order, but that was just a joke. For the first hour of Nitro, if you couldn't tell, I mean. For the first hour of Nitro, it's Zabisco and Shivani, with Tanay joining them time to time. They talk about how many WCW stars are in Japan, but the number one contender for Slim Jim's Halloween Havoc is the Macho Man, and he's here tonight to take on Greg Valentine. So it would be an apropos for the NWO to strike tonight after they are seen last week in their limo watching on the monitor threatening Savage. We open up with the Dungeon of Doom, uh, the Taskmaster, Kevin Sullivan, and Conan with Big Bubba and Jimmy Hart versus Juventud Guerrera and Brad Armstrong. Conan begins with a German step suplex to Hooventude, an arm drag into a hammerlock and a cradle. Hoovy with a hurricane rod, then a crossbody to the outside as he chops Conan. He then hits a springboard somersault leg drop onto Conan. High impact moves, a front face lock into a DDT by Conan to Hoovy. Great wrestling here. Conan then sets Hoovy up on top of the big time suplex from the top. Hoovy makes it to Armstrong and clotheslines Conan. Hip toss and a drop kick, but Conan with a drop kick to Armstrong and then a power bomb. Tons of action early as Conan tags in the Taskmaster, Kevin Sullivan, who hits a double stomp for the victory at 237. The Dungeon of Doom are the winners for a 157-second match. This is great, but I can't give it more than two stars because it was only 157 seconds. After the match, Dungeon of Doom turn on Conan. Then Jimmy says, no, it's an initiation. So Conan celebrates the victory with the Dungeon of Doom. They just beat him up to have him officially join the new Dungeon of Doom. So the, the beat up on Conan wasn't a turn. It was just an initiation. So Conan's officially in the Dungeon of Doom. As I said, the show last week where the NWO were in their limo saying every, all the other WCW stars are in Japan. Just Randy Savage will be on Nitro. So the NWO is going to take over tonight. Mike Tanay is ba backstage with the Macho Man getting his feelings on the situation. Savage is pacing back and forth with the, uh, the pink shirt and a green hat, a green cowboy hat. Uh, Savage's promo was barely audible because he talked way too quiet but then yelled at the end of each sentence. But he did say Halloween Havoc was scary, but he's not scared. And he'd wipe hope again in the NWO. You understand that? And then Chris Jericho takes on Mean Mike Enos now. Uh, bell rings start with a handshake but a slap by Mike Enos as he can't be trusted a shoulder block from the other side of the ropes then the standing arm bar uh, Jericho hangs him up with a hot shot across the ropes Enos then runs off the apron and clotheslines Jericho out to the floor when the action got digging out there uh, before choking him out with audio video cables at ringside Enos lays Jericho along the guardrail chest first and then successfully sends him into the ring and spine first into the turnbuckle Mike Eno sends Jericho uh, to the other corner and then headbutts him before locking in a bear hug. A big power slam after the bear hug, but Jericho kicks out. Uh, Jericho uh, it was going to be catapulted, but instead Enos goes for the Boston Crab. Instead of catapulting him to the corner, he grabs his legs and turns it over into the Boston Crab, a modified version where he leaned forward and didn't lean back enough to have that submission hold locked on properly. Then it stops the hold and sets him up for a backbreaker while holding Chris in the air, but Jericho hits an inside cradle out of nowhere, but then a two count. A thrust spinning kick by Jericho, followed by furious chops and a clothesline. Jericho with a double underhook suplex, then a missile drop kick from the top, looking like Owen Hart from the missile drop kick. Jericho sent Enos to the top with a sit-down powerbomb. Jericho back up with a side headlock takedown out of a power slam attempt. Nice counter, and Jericho gets the win out of that at 742. Very strange turn of events as Mike Enos dominated, and then Jericho gets a unique counter, a, sw a swinging neckbreaker out of a power slam attempt. He counters the power slam into a swinging neckbreaker, and then that's the counter move that wins. For Jericho, I gave it two stars and a quarter. 
Glacier, as the lights go out and the snow starts to rain versus Pat Tanaka. So this is going to be big time martial arts. They use Goldberg. Pat Tanaka is using Goldberg's theme one year before Goldberg makes his debut. They have it for Pat Tanaka. Uh, sort of like when the Patriot used Kurt Angle's theme before he came in the WWF. Glacier matches all happen in the dark. Uh, they both apply some martial arts, but Pat and Tanaka went for a high kick, but Glacier with a leg sweep. Tanaka power bombs into the mat, but a, a spinning round kick by Glacier wins it at 71 seconds. I gave it a half a star. The public enemy, Jenny Grunge and Rock and Rock, take on Harlem Heat for the tag titles. Harlem Heat are the champions. Stevie Ray takes out Grunge as Booker T is tagged out. Stevie Ray with a choke hold to Grunge in the corner. Stevie Ray rolled up Grunge as Rock and Rock was on the outside, and Booker T took care of him with a scissors kick. Booker off the ropes. It's a big time clothesline taking in Stevie Ray as Harlem Heat gets some double team work in here. Stevie Ray with a big leg drop, and that's a big leg. Uh, to Johnny Grunge. Rock tries to come in, but Booker T slams Grunge on the floor behind the official. Rock was distracting the official as his partner was being hurt simultaneously. Uh, Stevie Ray, legal man with Grunge, slams into the canvas. Nick Patrick, the official, counts it two before Stevie Ray with a reverse chin lock to Johnny Grunge just holds him there. He needs a hot tag to Rocco Rock as the Harmony Meat are a cohesive unit double teaming them, cutting off their half of the ring, making frequent tags. Harlem Heat double team Rocco Rock once he gets in and a sidewalk slam by Stevie Ray. Then Booker tries the Harlem Hangover, but Grunge moved Rocco Rock. Pretty good match here that's turned into an exciting brawl. A small package out of nowhere, and Rocco pins Booker T. They play Harlem Heat's music as they weren't sure whose shoulders were to the mat, but it was the public enemy. So in the end, the public enemy win the tag titles at 11 15 out of nowhere. New tag team champions, Johnny Grunge and Rocco Rock, are rated to two stars and three quarters. Public enemy celebrate with their titles. On the same night, Mark Mero wins the IC title. Public Enemy win the tag titles on Nitro. Hour 2 comes on, as do the Pyros, and Bischoff takes on commentary. Savage and Valentine go at it. This match was just basically a few minutes of a brawl, and then uh, Savage wins by DQ at 2.58 after the NWO hit the ring. The Outsiders and Six jump Savage. DiBiase and Six there, too. Outsiders edge to Savage. Liz is, comes to the entrance is overwhelmed by the beatdown. Giant grabs a mic and introduces Hollywood Hogan. They spray Savage's bald spot to, to build to Halloween Havoc. And then they, they take over the commentary booth and they announce their newest member, Vincent. Vincent, formerly known as Virgil, comes with an NWO shirt from the crowd, joins them in the commentary booth. Then they take over the matches for the second half of the card. The Giant versus Jim Powers. It was supposed to be VK Wall Street, but instead the Giant took over, and the Giant win was, wins with a choke slam over Jim Powers at 52 seconds. Half a star for the comedy and originality. NWO just completely take over the show here. Next, we have what was supposed to be Ron Studd versus Jim Duggan. Uh, Hollywood Hogan and the Outsiders say it's going to be six. So six takes on Jim Duggan and six wins after Duggan got choke slammed to the concrete on the outside at 220. Six wins. I gave it a star for some of the wrestling and the originality involved. Then the NWO Sting takes on Bo Ledoux. It was the irony of a fake Sting coming out on the same net as a fake Razor and Diesel is is great irony. Bo Ledoux uh, struggling with the Stinger. Fans chanted, we want Sting, even though the fake Sting wins with the Scorpion Deathlock at 136. I gave three quarters of a star for the originality. The Outsiders then took on High Voltage. It was supposed to be the French Canadians versus High Voltage, but the Outsiders took them on instead. It's just hilarious how the actual outsider, Outsiders go up against a segment where their fake Razor and Diesel was promised in the WWF. The Outsiders actually wrestle High Voltage to a pretty decent match here. I rated it a star and three quarters. A uh, Hall with an STF. Nash comes in after an Outsider's Edge. Jack Knife, both members of High Voltage. Outsiders win at 1020. I rated it at a star in three quarters, as I said. That does it for the matches portion of the show. The show ends with the NWO still at the commentary table. Hogan says we're going to tear WCW apart just like the Macho Man at Halloween Havoc. And they replay the show, the, the mid part of the show where they beat down Savage. Hogan says, what you going to do when the NWO takes over on you? I rated the show quality rating wise a 6.5 out of 10. I wasn't, it didn't have the greatest matches, but with the NWO taking over the show in the second half, did take titles, changing hands, the build to Halloween Havoc, it all kept you glued. It was suspenseful, it was different, it was original. Uh, so you got to give it points for that. And they beat Raw in the ratings 3.4 to 2.0. So overall, a great night for the NWO and for WCW Nitro. It was suspenseful. And we'll see what happens in the next part. I'm not going to end the show with the preceding announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. But I thought about it.
<laughs> we'll catch you on the next one, guys. Thanks.